70,000 is going to be a big level for a test of Bitcoin. What does it do yesterday? It literally kisses and pierces 70,000 by about $16 and then reverses basically three to $4,000. Now today, what we're seeing here on the charts is that we, are, we pulled back initially. We're kind of flat on the morning session. But what this tells us is that Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now, guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us. And we read every comment. And the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. Let's join Gareth in this video about Bitcoin and more. This 70K level is important and we know the pivot line is important. Here we touched the pivot line and here we rallied into resistance and got rejected. So which way is it going to go? As long as you stay above this pivot line, maintain a neutral to bullish bias on uh, Bitcoin. All right. If it flushes below and starts trading below, you have to go into a bearish consolidation or bearish fall bias. And that would be a move all the way back down to about 55,000. So again, just amazing to watch the pinball or ping pong play going back and forth on these charts from support to resistance. And then the question is, do we come back to support or do we reattack 70,000 on, on the chart of Bitcoin? Ethereum had that nice little move early. It kind of backed off yesterday, but starting to push up just a little bit again today. Resistance remains at 35.5. Support remains down here at around 3,100. And then secondary support in this lower range. Uh, by the way, Solana. I talked about Solana yesterday. It was above that key level. Look at this, guys. It put in a technical topping tail yesterday. It has a bearish reversal signal after piercing double top right here. And again, topping tail, classic topping tail right here. Now, in all fairness, what we're watching as technicians is this trend line here. If this trend line breaks to the downside, it's going to go sharply lower. If this can hold, maybe it can reattack this double top and even negate the topping tail. But big level right here, upsloping trend line. All of these lows coordinated right along it. Watch that over the next couple days. Gold today, small gain on gold. Not much going on here. Everyone on gold and silver, platinum, palladium, all waiting for the Federal Reserve tomorrow. That is going to be a key decision that will rock the commodities markets, mainly the precious metals markets. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, cautions against rising cryptocurrency scams involving their brand on various platforms. BlackRock, managing $10.5 trillion in assets, has observed a significant rise in investment-related scams particularly involving cryptocurrencies. These scams often direct users to dubious websites or platforms like WhatsApp and Telegram. In a post on X, BlackRock urged caution when dealing with individuals or platforms using its brand for investment offers. The firm emphasized that neither BlackRock nor its executives contact individuals via social media for investment purposes. Scammers frequently impersonate BlackRock employees, promising high returns and inviting individuals to fake stock or crypto training sessions. Victims are often asked to deposit funds on fraudulent trading platforms and face demands for additional funds to withdraw their supposed returns. BlackRock's Spot Bitcoin ETF, the Eshares Bitcoin Trust, IBIT, has accumulated $23 billion since its launch in January, making it the leading Spot Bitcoin ETF in the U.S. The firm has also introduced an Ethereum ETF CEO, Larry Fink, once a skeptic, now advocates for Bitcoin as digital gold, highlighting its value as a portfolio asset for economic stability and protection against currency debasement. BlackRock's warnings underscore the need for vigilance against crypto scams, as the firm continues to expand its footprint in the digital asset space. Right on the S&P 500 pre-market, and what we could see very clearly here is that Yesterday, the markets closed right here around 544.75 on the SPY. We had sideways after hours action. And then just before the end of after hours, we had a rollover. And the futures were actually trading down pretty sharply. But by this morning, by four in the morning, when the futures, well, I shouldn't say futures, when the SPY again started trading, 
we were all the way back up and are holding sideways for the course of the pre-market here. Now, listen, uh, my guess is that today with all the big earnings after the bell, you're going to see somewhat of a quiet sideways day, maybe up a little bit, maybe down. My guess is the semiconductors will direct that. And we'll talk about the semiconductors here in just a minute as we get through. But right now, again, we are holding steady. Now, if we flip to the daily chart, notice again, I've shown you guys this, the trend line prior. But basically what we have here is a trend line that is so far holding. Now, the problem with this, guys, is that if we continue to make sideways to slide up consolidation, we all know what that pattern is, right? In fact, let me do a diagram. Here you have a down move, right? So let's do it here. We have a down move like this. And then when you get this sideways kind of consolidation, that's what we call a bearish flag consolidation. And we can see it right here on the chart, down move, and the beginnings of that sideways consolidation. So the question is, is now listen, this is what we would call an immature pattern. It only has two sideways days, but today could be number three. And once you get past number three, then you start creating a good mature pattern with higher probabilities to the downside. So in general, this is a bear flag. It ultimately results in this downside move. In general, if we continue to go sideways to slightly up, you would expect a breakdown in the not too distant future. That again is a clear kind of replication of the technicals on the chart. All right. Now, again, we are just coming off of our all time highs. So if we zoom out on this, and I always like to show the bigger time frames, what we can see here is that Listen, if you do start to sell off and we have a bigger sell off in the S&P, what is your likely target? Well, at least in the near term, your likely target is this trend line. OK, so again, what's fascinating about this, and I love bigger time frame analysis because it gives us such a clear view of what the future could bring. Remember, when we're looking at the daily chart, we're looking at what's going to happen over the next one to two weeks, you know, somewhere in that vicinity. When we go to the weekly chart, we're looking at the next one to two months, maybe even further out. And the monthly chart, it's potentially one to two years out, right? But what we're clearly seeing here is if you connect the COVID low to these lows here and here and here, it lines up perfectly. And what that tells us is that if we sell off and we start breaking down, this would be your likely target range on the charts. Okay, so you're looking at a move down to about the 470 level. Now, what's fascinating about this is that as a technician, what I always try to do is make sure that I have multiple factors. Remember, I talk about factors all the time. For those of you that are just tuning in for the first time, you may say, hey, what the heck is a factor? A factor is a reason, a thesis, a factor for why it should be a long or a short at that particular price. Well, look at this, guys. If we, let's just map this out. Let's game this out, right? So let's say that this line rises a little bit more, right? So it takes a little bit of time because you're you, unlikely that we're going to go right down vertically into that level. So let's say here, this takes just a little bit more time to like November. And again, no, November's not that far away. But what we see is that line rises and look at this. We take this pivot high, which was your 2021 all-time high on the market and we map it out right here and look these two lines converge right out here and these are the types of things again that for me are unbelievably important in terms of finding levels that i can trust because they have probability in their favor right and so it's not just listen if a trade is 55 percent success versus 45 percent losing i don't want to take that trade I want trades that are 70 to 80% success rate, all right? I essentially want to be a casino, and if I have enough people come through, essentially enough trades coming through the casino, I'm always making money, not on every gambler. Some gamblers take you for money, but in general, there's a high percentage that come in and walk out losing money when they're gambling, and that's what I want to be as a trader. I want to be the house, the casino, not the gambler. So the su suffice it to say that if we were to fall into this level, that now becomes major technical support. And at that point, you'd get in a scenario where you'd have to decide, are we going to then bounce and go to new all-time highs? Or do we just have a small bounce? Because I still think you'll bounce either way. Or, and then we break even lower. Where would low be? This next pivot down here 
although I'd have to find a secondary fact. Bitcoin faces a sharp rejection at $70,000, dropping to $66,500 as bears push PTC lower. Traders now eye $60,000 as a potential next target. Bitcoin saw a swift $4,000 drop after reaching $70,000 on July 30, falling to $66,500 as the Asia trading session began. This familiar pattern of rejection at key resistance levels has frustrated bulls. BTC's failure to maintain $70,000 accompanied $2 billion of BTC moving out of a U.S. government-associated wallet. Despite weekend pledges by presidential candidates to build a Bitcoin reserve, the sell-off continued. Analysts and traders, including William Clementi and Keith Allen, suggest Bitcoin needs to reclaim the $69,000 level to aim for new all-time highs. Popular trader Roman predicts a potential drop to $60,000 before a bullish reversal expecting a short squeeze to drive prices higher. On-chain data from CryptoQuant shows increasing BTC outflows from exchanges, which could signal bullish sentiment and a potential price breakout in the future. Bitcoin's recent price action highlights the ongoing battle between bulls and bears, with key support levels and market dynamics closely watched as traders anticipate the next moves. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.